Hi there, this is Rob Bernardino, aka the iDuck on Lotus Talk, and this is my uh, Lotus uh, 400 2017. Um, and first, I want to welcome you to, to the Daily Driven Lotus, um, which is going to be a new video blog and uh, Facebook page, which I'm putting together um, with the hopes of uh, sort of demonstrating that Lotuses can be daily driven, particularly the Avora class Lotuses are perfect as uh, family carriers. Um, daily drivers and track weapons really uh, taking all the advantages of Lotus engineering uh, in daily life and so this is my 400 it's a 2017 it's probably the first manual in the United States um, if you follow me on uh, Lotus talk you may have heard that I picked this up day after Christmas after I traded in my 2011 uh, S um, which served me very well as a daily driven Lotus um, Anyway, um, I'm going to go over some uh, review uh, of the 400. In brief, this is sort of the two-minute review. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of reviews, but this is sort of my take on the 400. So I'm sure you've seen plenty of pictures of the 400. Um, a lot of people think that compared to the Series 1 Lotus Evora, um, it looks perhaps a little clunkier. I think you got to see it in person because I think it looks pretty darn aggressive and pretty neat. Um, of course, you know that the exterior, they basically changed the front uh, bumper and fascia, uh, made it this more square look, which is honestly the trend among auto design. Uh, sort of looks a little bit like a nose to an R8. Um, they also put these heavier duty plastic grills on. And this uh, removable replaceable splitter on the top, they've also put these uh, plastic grills up here, which again are much more durable uh, than those on the S1 of Aura. Uh, the rest of the car in the front is pretty much the same from an exterior standpoint. Um, the A-pillars and the roof are all the same. Side panels are the same. Um, as we get towards the rear, they've changed the uh, side paneling here on a three-quarter panel, so there's actually an inset duct, and so the bodywork basically works like a scoop. One note is that these are asymmetric. The uh, right side one, which is just for engine cooling, is actually smaller on the interior than on the driver's side. Coming towards the rear, we have this uh, three-step wing, uh, which some people like, some people don't. I like it. Um, I suspect, uh, even though it's actually a little more complex than the previous uh, Lotus wing, I press serve some purpose. You're seeing a lot of the cars nowadays having this uh, sort of um, channel built into the wings which perhaps creates a vortex to create more uh, downforce that uh, has been alluded to being improved on the uh, 400 compared to the Series 1 Evora. Uh, in the rear we still have a redesigned uh, designed bumper where the um, turn the reverse lights are now placed down low in these uh, grills and again the grills aren't fake on this car they're actually real grills um, which probably uh, helps evacuate some air from the uh, engine compartment um, and then you have the diffuser, um, which the diffuser is actually set more flush to the bumper than on the S1 series. Again, my take on that is that it probably protects the diffuser a little bit, a little bit better for aero. One thing I remember is on my S1 that my uh, diffuser actually got dinged by another car. Uh, in this case, it would probably be hit, protected by the bumper perhaps. Wheels and suspension are a little bit different um, compared to the S1. Uh, the brakes are now uh, two-piece uh, hats, which are lighter because they have aluminum hats, um, slightly bigger. The wheels are a little more outset than the previous car. And according to Lotus, uh, the car has a stiffer suspension and has slightly lower ride height. Um, for my day-to-day -day driving, it does feel a little stiffer and a little bit more controlled, uh, but really hasn't lost that nimbleness that we really appreciate in a Lotus. One last comment on the exterior, of course, is the side mirrors, which are new. They're bigger, and they have this incorporated uh, turn signal side marker, which then removes the side marker down here on the S1, allowing for the sides to be a little bit more cleaner in appearance. Before we get in the car, um, again, here is the side scoop on the driver's side, and the port internally is actually bigger because the driver's side port is used for the induction. The biggest change in the car that you would notice, most people notice, of course, is... In fact, the interior. Interior starts with thinner 
uh, side rails and they're also lower. Um, and then the interior has a brand new dash, which again mimics a lot of the other new car designs out here, a little more compact uh, and a little more square, uh, which goes along with the language. Uh, the door panels are um, more compact as well and uh, sculpted appropriately. Um, the materials uh, perhaps are a little bit higher quality on this car than the S1, but honestly, I, I liked the S1 a lot. Uh, some people lament that they like the swooping dash more. I actually like this dash a lot. I think it's a lot more functional. Into the car is really simpler with the, uh, the lower sills, and also that allows for a wider footwell, which includes a um, dead pedal, which you didn't have in the previous car. A lot more room in the footwell than in the S1 Evora. Um, the layout's a lot more logical on this car. You have the start button here, um, the same steering wheel and gauges from the previous car, and then all the major buttons are up here. That includes seat heaters, sport and race mode. Uh, sport and race basically uh, both toggle off the exhaust valve and then sport uh, adjusts the um, accelerator parameters uh, just like it does in the S1. Race mode is the same thing plus uh, turning off the traction control essentially. Hazard, door locks, silent mode which basically allows you to be in sport or race mode plus closing down the valve uh, below 5000 RPMs. Um, this actually saved my life quote unquote uh, at Laguna Seca. I ran uh, four sessions with it in silent mode and did not get a black flag. Uh, then the last session I was there, I turned this off just to see if I would get a black flag. Uh, and indeed I did. Um, sound limitations at Laguna Seca were 92 decibels a day I was there. And with uh, this off and in sport mode, the car hit uh, 94.5 decibels on a uphill climb in third gear, uh, wide open throttle. Um, with that on, the sound was limited and I did not uh, was not flagged. The car also has a brand new uh, head unit, which uh, a lot of the uh, car riders uh, lament. Still looks aftermarket. I honestly think it looks very clean and classic, and I'll go into more detail later on. Scrolling down, you have uh, new dials, which have a lot more micro detents on them. So uh, again, works better than the S1 series. Um, the fan is actually stronger. Um, and then when we go here, the glove box is not push button, but rather your standard pop open and close with a handle. Still has the same stereo system essentially. Speaker in the A pillar there, and speaker right here. The uh, seats are all new. Uh, they're the Sparco seats, which uh, were essentially mandated for a number of reasons. The main one being is this pod right here for the US, which is where the uh, supplemental restraint or side airbag is. Um, to pop the seat forward, lift this little tab, and then you can see that this section of the seat has a little rubberized cover which is where the airbag would deploy. And then the back is more of this uh, satin finished plastic, which is a little more durable and actually has a little tiny cutout here for more leg room. Um, we've unfortunately lost the uh, center armrest, but it said got a cup holder and uh, have the uh, 12 volt socket there. The rear seats are uh, much more compact, which gives a little bit more room. Uh, if you're daily driving the Lotus, it certainly makes a difference when you stuff kids back there or put things in there. Uh, and then over there, of course, is the subwoofer as before. Again, this is now a view from the passenger side. And one other uh, nice little detail is we do get a cup holder uh, at the uh, passenger footwell. Uh, however, when the heater is on, the heat blows right onto your cold drink. Something to think about. But again, overall, uh, fit to finish is excellent. Ergonomics are better. More room for everyone to enjoy the car. This is the uh, trunk view uh, into the uh, 400. A uh, little bit uh, improved uh, battery door compartment, um, but the size of the compartment is the same. And then of course the engine well is filled with this new stack, which is basically supercharger inside a, a water-cooled charge cooler. Um, rest of the engine is still the same uh, down below. Um, you can see here there is a now a bottle or reservoir separate for the coolant of the charge cooler and the previous coolant uh, reservoir here. Of course this larger mass looks cool but makes things a little bit more tight in the engine compartment. Uh, getting to the oil filter filler is actually a little tighter than before. 
uh, but certainly when you're uh, looking through the rear window, you get to see your little throttle actuator here and it's kind of a cool gizmo to stare at. So that's my uh, two minute walk around of the 400. Um, in subsequent videos, I will go in excruciating detail of differences between the 400 and the uh, Lotus Evora Series 1, or normally aspirated in S Series, including nut and bolt placement and what have you, as I've noticed, and I think that'll be more interesting to Lotus people. Um, in conclusion though, I think the 400 is a great car. Um, it definitely shows that the engineers did what they set out to do, which is basically take the Series 1, take it apart completely and try and lighten and uh, improve it, and then also uh, deal with things which probably um, would make the 400 a better daily driver than a Series 1. For example, making things replaceable such as this little um, front cap is separate from the bumper and as you can imagine this is probably the first thing to get crunched in a, um, a low curb rash whereas on the previous car you basically have to replace the whole bumper and this one you can replace just this tiny low splitter and be much cheaper for you or the insurance company. Or in fact that the grills are easily removable, where in the previous car you have to remove the whole bumper to get access to the grills. Or where on the top grills, uh, these suckers um, uh, were very malleable and flexible on the old car. In this car they're very sturdy, so the chance of them getting damage is very unlikely. So in summary, I've had uh, this car now for about a month and change. Daily drive it every day, put about 2,000 miles on it already. I hauled the kids around and uh, did one track day on it, and it's been a great car. Um, I did one oil change on it, which I'll show in another video, and that has some nuances compared to the previous car, but overall, everything about this car I think is a step above the already great Series 1 Evora. Um, do I think it's worth the uh, investment to jump up to a brand new car? Depends on what you're going to do with the car. Um, for me, it really is used daily, all the time, and so the expense is really worth it. For those that take the Lotus out just on the weekends, a uh, fair weather friend, I think the Series 1 car is an excellent car, but um, as more and more of these 400s come out there, uh, if you get a chance to see one and ride on one, you'll see that it is definitely a world better than the Series 1 Lotus Evora. So again, that's my uh, two minute walk around the Evora. Later on I'll have some driving videos and some other stuff, and uh, hopefully you'll continue to follow along with me and my adventures on Daily Driven Lotus. Please like us and share with your friends.